coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. The Department of Interior bans the use of Chinese-made drones. The FAA denies request for remote ID NPRM extension. And Skyfront and Silva's technology partner to produce long-range UAS. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned, in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. After grounding approximately 800 drones in its fleet back in October, the Department of Interior has now formally banned its staff from using Chinese-made drones. The department made the decision based on potential espionage concerns, and over concerns images taken with the drones could be valuable to foreign entities, organizations, and governments. In response to the ban, DJI said it's extremely disappointed by the order, which inappropriately treats the technology's country of origin as a litmus test for its performance, security, and reliability. The company added it makes some of the industry's most safe, secure, and trusted drone platforms for commercial operators and noted several entities including U.S. cybersecurity consultants, U.S. federal agencies including the Department of Interior and the Department of Homeland Security have independently tested and validated the security of its product design specifically for the DOI and other U.S. government agencies. Now it's time for our Unmanned Minute where we'll be taking a quick look at some interesting news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. AUVSI and the Consumer Technology Association are arguing against a Texas law that restricts the use of drones for capturing images and operations over critical infrastructure, as it may unlawfully intrude upon federal sovereignty over the national airspace. In a joint amicus brief filed in support of the plaintiffs challenging the law in federal court, AUVSI and CTA also argue the law's restrictions present a significant threat to the growing UAS industry in the state. Empire Drone Company received a Part 137 certification from the FAA allowing them to spray crops by drone. Empire is now one of only a few companies which have this authorization in the United States. Spraying drones can cover up to 24 acres per hour and are flown either autonomously in a grid or manually for spot spraying. Due to the large number of drones flying in the area, the FAA issued a no-tam placing a TFR on the site where the helicopter crashed and killed Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter, and seven others. The TFR was in place through January 31st and included airspace 5 nautical miles in all directions from the accident site and up to an altitude of 5,000 feet MSL to provide a safe environment for accident investigation. This may become a common practice for the FAA in future incidents such as this. Always check TFRs before flying. DroneUp is now an unmanned aircraft system service supplier to provide the low altitude authorization and notification capability initiative for the FAA. DroneUp's Lance capability will be available in app through Airspace Planner providing its client base the next level of efficiency for complete drone pilot management. Prior to this release, DroneUp had provided a Lance request capability through AirMap Deep Linking and has since worked to develop a one-stop solution for drone pilots within its own platform. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. The FAA has denied the request from the AMA, EAA, and several other groups to extend the official comment period on the proposed rule for remote ID on UAS. These groups are urging everyone in the aviation community to submit formal comments to the FAA before the deadline on March 2nd. Amateur drone pilots as well as other aero modelers are all unique and fly a number of different disciplines which will be impacted in different ways by this rule. The community feels it's important modelers tell the FAA how each of them will be impacted individually, as well as emphasize why the model community cannot be forced into a one-size-fits-all approach. To make commenting easier and more accessible, the AMA has a helpful web page on their government affairs blog, which allows you to readily access a number of venues to comment on the NPRM, as well as contact your elected officials. 
You can also find several template comments drafted by the AMA, which you can use as guidance when writing your own personal comment. All of this can be found at amablog.modelaircraft.org slash amagov. As a result of a partnership with Silvis Technologies, hybrid electric UAS provider Skyfront has combined its 5-hour endurance perimeter UAS with Silvis's high-powered Streamcaster radio. The result is a perimeter XLRS, which can fly for up to 5 hours while maintaining command and control links and streaming real-time video up to 60 miles from the ground control station. The partnership has allowed UAS operators to perform various mission types across the world, including inspecting pipelines and power lines and performing surveillance missions. The UAS can operate in environments where other data links typically fail, such as in maritime, mountain, and jungle deployment. As a result of the stream casters MIMO and beam forming technologies being able to successfully overcome range limitations, signal attenuation, and multipath interference. Other notable features of the UAS include testing and integration with numerous sensor payloads, seamless power and harnessing, and elimination of interference between GNSS unit and radio. And that wraps up our Airborne Demand for this week. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to AUVSI.org and airborne-unmanned.net. I'll see you tomorrow.